welcome to Knock Hill for the Celtic Speed Mini Cooper Cup Championship for the David Leslie Super Touring Car Festival. John Duncan, you're the championship leader and you're starting fourth. Yeah. There's not much in it. Uh, no, it's, it was tight. The qualifying was quite tight this morning. I'm, I'm pretty happy to take fourth uh, in what's quite a big grid today. Uh, I've got Hannah in front of me and then David and Robbie. So just try and keep on their coattails and uh, it's not quite at the stage where I can afford to run around behind them yet, but if I get an opportunity to go past, I'll take it. And do these cooler um, conditions, do these, do they sit you? Yeah, I think so. It was it was nice running in the, in the nice weather the last round, but the tyres were getting uh, pretty cooked by the end of it. So hopefully this will make today a little bit easier. And uh, what lap do the tyres go off their best? It's, it's hard to tell really, because it's always changing. Um, we got a red flag in qualifying this morning and I went out for a second run thinking that the tyres would be better having cooled down, but they weren't, so I don't know. <laughs> well, you'll soon find out, but um, best of luck, John, and hope to see you on the podium. All right, thanks, Fiona. So thank you very much, Fiona, down there in the pit. It's always great to catch up with the driver before he goes out there and just find out exactly where the driver's head is at. And John Duncan, a man with a very level head, and he always tells you exactly how it's going. After qualifying, though, it was David Slay who come out fastest off the mini guys and girls. Uh, it was interesting to hear what John had to say about how the tyres do actually start going off, though. One man we're going to have to keep our eyes on in this race. Not just number 23, Ian Munroe, he goes through short there. The man who's on the front row of the grid, alongside David Slay, and that is Robbie Dalglish. He really is the form man coming into this mini well, not just this race meeting, but he's been carrying great form all season. Can he confirm his form and can he get another couple of wins? Or could he get maybe a cheeky little triple this weekend? We don't see that happening very often. The last person I think to possibly do that was Kyle Reid. I'll have to check back through my notes. But David Slane, Robert Alglish, front row the grid with Chappers and John Duncan Row 2, Michael Weddle, Ian Monroe, Doogie Simpson, Dom Wheatley, Craig Blake and Ashley Morris. The ever-improving Ashley Morris, we've got to say that. Returning Taylor Shand we see there as well, which is good to see Taylor back on the grid. But Johnny Dreelin way down at the back. Very unlike Johnny Dreelin to be so far off the pace. Now... Hang on to your hats here. We are about to go racing for the minis at Knock Hill. Green flag at the back. Let's keep our eyes on the Beatsons Building Supply Bridge as the one-minute board goes out. We wait for the 30-second board to go out. And then after that, the five-second board very quickly. And then we will be racing. Nerves inside the cars now building into gear. Put on that clutch, try and hold a nice little bit of revs. You can see somebody quite near the front there with their foot resting on the brake. The brake lights go off, the red lights start to come on. And here we go. Full complement of lights and knock hill in the sunshine for the minis. And away we go down towards Duffus Dip for the first time of asking. As all the cars do make a good clean start, no stalls on the grid, thankfully. As down towards Duffus and underneath the Beatsons Bowling Supply Bridge. And it's Slay and Dalgleish side by side into Duffus. And David Slay takes that one from Robbie Dalgleish. John Duncan gets ahead of Hannah Chapman to make sure that third place is his. And Ian Monroe tries to go up inside of Chapman. And a lot of people then jockeying for positions as they come round. Somebody a little bit wide in the gravel there. And Fiona Kindness gets a good eye view of that. Ooh, and jumps back on the track at Butchers, thankfully. Everybody managing to avoid that car as we go up the back straight now. On board with Michael Weddle here. As Weddle brakes, turns in for Clark Corner. And uh, we can see a rather brightly coloured car in front. And that will be Ian Monroe, one would imagine. The yellow car side by side for lead at the airport. No, Dalgleish up the inside of David Slay. David Slay knows that one has been lost. And Robbie Dalgleish hits the front already at the end of lap number one. Here at Knockhill, Dalgleish slides his red number 91 car up towards the front as the Pit boards go out for all the drivers, letting them know exactly where they are as they go over the crest of the line. It's a busy pit wall at the end of the first lap. And how many drivers can see those pit boards? I'll be very surprised on lap number one as they go through Leslie's absolute flat out left hander in a mini, named after the late great David Leslie. And Ian Monroe makes a mistake. Monroe's wide in the gravel. He comes back on it, Butchers, and that's really going to hurt Ian Monroe. He loses maybe four or five positions as he comes through and up the back straight now, but Robbie Dalgleish still stretching away at the front as they go through Clark Corner. Bit of a change further back down is that Dougie Simpson going alongside Michael Weddle. Well, well, doesn't want to give that position up, but I fear he will have to as they come round towards, yes, Simpson gets ahead. Craig Blake now on the attack, and look at young Ashley Morris here as well. 
she has been improving so much all the way down from Thursday for every single race meeting and Weddell now flirts with the gravel trap and not just the back of Ashley Morris as we see going up the main straight Morris pulls it from the slipstream on Craig, Craig Blake three wide almost over the crest of the hill with Morris dancing on the white line on the inside can she make that pass count this is big big bravery stuff she goes through on the inside takes not one but two positions going into Duffy's dip fabulous manoeuvre from young Ashley there to get ahead of Blake and Simpson and Blake try as he may to get through there because Weddle makes a position up at McIntyre's also but Ashley Morris here side by side through the chicane hang on just a minute before we get on about Ashley Morris Craig Blake and Michael Weddle just not knowing when to give up the corner Weddle manages to not spear across the track in front of Ian Monroe and I've got to say I think Don Wheatley poor Don Wheatley was just trying to avoid what was going on in front of him there he got onto the gravel and the grass at the back straight as well so we're going to take a breath here as the minis really start turning on at the end of, uh, end of the second lap or the start of the third lap. I forget where we are just now, but that was all caused by, and through no fault of her own, that was Ashley Morris doing a fabulous overtake on the main straight. And then everybody just got that little bit out of uh, sorts and trying to do wild manoeuvres. And before we know it, there's cars on the grass. We're on board with Weddle, and that's Monroe alongside them. What's Weddle going to do here? A little look in the mirror, breaks down a gear turns in but he's got to be got to give second best oh look at that so close we could see Ian Monroe in the driver's door there of Michael Weddle and then through comes Monroe on the inside oh a little bit of a uh, hello how's <laughs> your father there as they come through McIntyre side by side through Butchers for a lot of places here we hold our breath in the commentary box as they all make it through fabulous driver and that was Don Wheatley unfortunately running wide <laughs> the exit of the chicane and Ashley Morris Dougie Simpson and Craig Blake have Thankfully, I managed to clear well clear of that because that was starting to get a little bit uh, keen and energetic as they go through McIntyre's. We see Johnny Drilling coming through and in 155, that's uh, Mark Dawson this weekend in the pink track Scotland car as they all come back in towards the open, ready to tear lumps out each other on another lap here. Ian Monroe is going to be ruining that uh, little bit of contact at McIntyre, side to side contact with Michael Weddle. He's now lost his door mirror from the left hand side, so. If he is in that situation again where he's trying to defend, he's, uh, he's lost a wing winner. That's never the greatest thing. But it was great to see how close Weddle and Monroe were. You could see Ian Monroe out the driver's window on Michael Weddle's car. Michael Weddle was trying his best not to give up that position. But by the time they got to turn three McIntyres, he really had to concede, unfortunately. But a uh, great mini action here. Ashley Morris makes her way up the back straight. And she's pulled away from Craig Blake, and that looked like it could possibly be. Was that Dougie Sims? And have a look at Craig Blake as they go in towards Clark Corner. But let's not forget our race leader. <laughs> it's hard to do. And, and this, this situation is very easy to forget about the men at the front. That's Robbie Dalgleish and David Slay. They have gone checked out from these two, this battling pair here, through the hairpin, the Mini Max car of John Duncan and the clone engineering car of. Hannah Chapman up the main street. They go over the crest of the hill. Adrian Haldane of Clone Motorsport will be delighted to see Hannah's on the inside there as she goes over the crest of the hill and underneath the Beatson's Burning Supply Bridge. Chappers makes the move. Count as the spectators point that one out as Hannah already has that manoeuvre done and dusted before they're even anywhere near Duffy's dip. Dougie Simpson extremely energetic over the kerb in front of 95. Craig Blake there and Michael Weddle watches on from a distance here. These guys trying as hard as they can to catch up with Ashley Morris, who's just ahead of them, just further up the road just now. They are going out of shot as she goes in towards Clarks. This really is a fabulous, fabulous race for young Ashley. Very impressed to see her driving so hard and so far up the front here, side by side. That's Dom Wheatley trying to go past uh, Ross Wilkinson there. I think he managed to make that one stick as your leaders come through the air for 91, Robbie Dalgleish. The form man of the championship just now, chased hard by David Slee in car number five, the DSR car. Pit boards come out for these guys. Chappers third, John Duncan fourth. Lonely ride right now for Ash Morris, but she won't mind that as we go back on board with Michael Weddle. And this could be all action. We are well aware of that. The eyes in the mirror say all as Weddle has a little look up. He now focuses in the back of Craig Blake. Blake goes defensive into Duffus here. What's Weddle going to do? He's going to take the race line. Look at the speed of Craig Blake over the apex of Duffus. Has he made that one stick? He's almost out of control as he goes through the left-hander. Such was his speed over the crest. Now look at it, it's now affected him. That short-term gain over the crest of the hill there was in a bit of a loss as he got to McIntyre's. Michael Weddle will be... Uh, enjoying this one as he comes up the back straight. He's had a good run through the chicane. Blake defends in towards Clark Corner. 
as we go wide with Michael Wedley. He wants to hit that care, but not get too much of it. And he keeps the gas on. He's just squeezing alongside Craig Blake. Blake's going to have to give him that room. He puts him almost on the grass here. Blake being a little bit naughty that you've got to let the man get alongside you if he starts to get that overlap. And Michael Weddell with a sensational bit of driving there. And what great onboard footage that was of Craig Blake also going over the top of Duffus. I've never seen a man go that quick over the crest of the hill there in that black and green number 95 car. As, oh, John Duncan once again ahead of Hannah Chapman. So we've missed that one on our screens because we were focusing further down the field there, but we'll let that one go because the action that we were following was absolutely first class. One, two, they go through up towards Clark's. John Duncan, then Hannah Chapman. So Chappers in the number eight Ram Tubular's car has got it all to do again here as she goes through Clark Corner. Still Ash Morris now getting chased down by Dougie Simpson, but I think Simpson's got too much to ask for here. Then it's Michael Weddle, Craig Blake, and the flapping wing mirror of 23, Ian Monroe. As we get to the last corner, the hairpin, very steep corner that, and you've got to get a perfect exit because it leads you all the way up the main straight towards your pit boards and the flagging point. John Duncan makes a move there as Hannah pops out from the slipstream. Duncan was trying to counteract that but Chapman is through on the inside anyway Hannah squeezed that many through the tiniest of gaps there and she's made that one count as they go down Leslie's now can John Duncan throw it back up the inside no he doesn't want to put anything too risky on the line he's got to think about his championship here because a DNF right now would be a disaster with other guys further up the road Dalglish and Slay as we look further back down into the pack, I'd like to try and catch up with Craig Blake again because he's been pretty exciting to watch and he's just dancing with the edge of the gravel as he comes through the chicane there. Got to watch because you can see there's a little lip there in the gravel trap. The cars cause that themselves. And if you actually just drop a wheel over that, it makes the car want to spin in a heartbeat. Got to watch not going the gravel. Plus you've got track limits to contend with as well. Nobody wants you breaking the track limits. Especially race direction, they will be keeping a good eye on all the mini progress out here. Mini's always under pretty much heavy scrutiny from race control, race direction for their antics on track. But it's a checker flag for Robbie Dalgleish. He wins. David Slay in second place. Chappers gets third, and John Duncan comes home for a fine fourth place as they're still side by side into the hairpin. And it's Don Wheatley trying to force it up the inside, and it looks like he has got Craig Dillon. Yes, a little bit of rubbing there as they go past number 55. Also in the midst of that, and that will be fee kindness as they all accelerate up towards that checkered flag. Great action all the way down the field here in the minis. But it's Robbie Dalgleish who comes away with a victory from David Slay, and Hannah Chapman rounds off the podium with a fine third place ahead of John Duncan. Dalgleish, we've said, is the form man, carrying great momentum as he comes into this one. Only three tenths of a second was the victory over David Slay but it was still a good enough victory. Three and a half seconds, almost four seconds down, was Hannah Chapman and John Duncan right on her tail. Returning Taylor Shan comes home 11th. Taylor will be happy with that. Don Wheatley, though, will not be happy with 13th. Let's hand down to the paddock, pit lane, and let's catch up with Fiona for some driver reaction. Fiona, are you there? Well done, Robbie. Another win for you. That was quite a close race with David. Yeah, good start, got away, and passed David on the first lap, and then got a wee gap kind of maintained it throughout the race and uh, towards the end I could see him coming for me he made a wee mistake so I got a nice wee breather for the last couple of laps but yeah happy to take the win in the first race Good. Are you hoping for another win today? Yeah so we're starting pole now for the ne next race so we've made a few changes um, to the clutch in the car and it seems to be a lot better for coming off the line so hopefully get to that first corner first and try same again get away Good. Well best of luck for race two and hopefully we'll see you for another win Thanks very much Well done, Hannah. P3 there. You kept John on his toes. Yeah, it was. I was just saying, it's just so nice to have a race where both re drivers respect each other, and it was so such a nice change not to have any contact. Just me and John, we were just switching places so many times, and I would get past, and then I made a mistake, and John would sneak up the inside again. It was just really enjoyable race. I absolutely loved it, but glad that I came out in front. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Ashley Morris was going to sneak up on the back of you two halfway through that race. I did have a look behind and I did see, I was trying to work, I shouldn't be looking in my mirrors, but I was trying to work out who it was behind and I was like, is that Ashley? Like, she's doing really well, yeah. so, yeah. Might have a run for your money for this year for the ladies' championship. I can't afford any more DNFs, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck for race two and hopefully see you on the podium again. Thank you. You're welcome.
with Michael Weddle, top newcomer. Well done. Thank you very much. Good, and you've got a new livery on the car this weekend. Tell us a bit about that. Uh, basically, after the last round, we had quite a bit of damage. We decided to change up a little bit, and the sponsor, Summy Hills View, came up really big to give us a bit more money to fund it. So we decided to put them smashing on the bonnet, put some Hulk green on it, nice and shiny. Reminds me of Mercedes Benz a little bit. So if you're looking for a nice summer holiday in the west of Scotland, go to Summer Hills View. And you had a few trips through the gravel there, just to talk us through what happened. Well, the sun was out for the race, so I decided to go for a play in the sand a little bit. But no, it was a quite, it was quite a rough race. And Headlights took a bit of a damage as well, but overall the livery's actually held up, so I'm quite happy about it, so yeah. Good. And any tactics for the next race? Go forward instead of backwards. Sounds good to me. Well, best of luck. <laughs> So as we see the Celtic Speed Mini Cooper Cup cars heading out from the holding area onto the track. Warming tyres up Douglas Simpson going through McIntyre's car number 81 there. He will be on the attack here in race number two. If race number one's anything to go by, well, I would expect a very much elbows out affair here. Robbie Dalglish took the honours in race number one from David Slate and Hannah Chapman with John Duncan just being off the podium and the sensation of race number one was car number 77 in fifth place. Ashley Morris with a fabulous, fabulous race. Great bit of racecraft and uh, taking her opportunities and making it count just in the right places in the right time. We saw a lot of guys battling behind her and having some sort of contact and ultimately cost themselves just that little bit throughout the course of that race. But let's see how this one unfolds as the cars make their way round for the first of their warm-up laps, or their only warm-up lap, I should say, as they leave and come up towards their grid slots here. Number 91, Robbie Dalglish. He is the form man, I've said that, he's carrying so much momentum with him here. David Slate did hang in extremely well in that race, so David was um, not letting Robbie disappear in towards the distance. But what has he got for him? What has he concocted up during the break to try and see if he can make that mini any faster? And can he hang in there? Has Michael Weddle got anything in the tank? Ian Monroka, 23, and Craig Blake. Well, Craig Blake, the fastest man I've possibly ever seen over the apex of Duffus. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for him. As the grid comes up, Dalgleish and Slay, Chapman and Duncan, Morris Simpson, Weddle, Blake, Munro, and William Blake in this one. Uh, with Taylor Shan, Fiona Kindness, an all-female row with Dom Wheatley, Ross Wilkinson, Ross McComb, Craig Dillon, Simon Holderness, Gordon Long, Johnny Dreeland, Andrew Bell, and Mark Dawson all the way at the back in the 155 car as we have the cars on the grid for the minis here. Five second board goes out. As the five second board goes out, the revs start to rise. They will already be in gear. We look towards the lights on the bridge or the repeater lights on the pit wall or the gantry. They're held for quite a long time. And away we go down towards the first corner for the first time of Askim. And it's everybody just trying to make sure they get up through the gearbox. And will it be Robbie Dalglish who takes the, the, the lead, I should say, in towards the first corner? Yes, side by side with David Slay. And Hannah Chapman tries to come up and say, David Slay trying to be a little bit braver and almost a bit cheeky on the outside there, but doesn't get away with it. And Dalglish leads as they come through McIntyre's turn number three. And this first lap, free kindness goes through with William Blake and Craig Dillon. And they don't really way down the bit mid pack here. We expect to see Tom Wheatley much further up the front. And has he got something? Has he worked something out in the little break to try and get back up there? The guys from Performance Take Race and will be working hard on that car and be trying to get that in tow as we head round towards the open. Somebody was pretty sideways out of shot there. And they let's hope they held that together as into the open. David Slay homes in on the brakes here as Simpson looks like going up the inside of John Duncan, but thinks better off it. Dougie Simpson's got ahead of Ashley Morris, so Morris hasn't had the greatest of starts here. And what was Michael's uh, Michael Weddle's uh, mantra? Try going forwards instead of backwards. Let's not go backwards in this race, he said to Fiona Wallace in that little interview that he had for winning the newcomers part of it. So Weddle will have his eyes fixed on... Oh, there's a big hit off the kerb there for... Was that Simpson? No, it was Morris, actually. Ashley Morris hits the kerb, and that was right in front of Michael Weddle, so that might take his eye off the ball a little bit as Craig Blake is side by side with Weddle as they go over the crest of the chicane. Hold on to your hats, here they come into view. Blake ahead of Weddle this time though. Weddle backs out of it and Munro tries to get involved and Kindness is in there as well as we go up the back straight in towards Clark Corner. 
car number 30, Andy Bell just goes through there. In fact, car number 30 was Gordon Long. Completely got that one wrong. That looked like a car going the wrong way in the entrance. It was! Car going the wrong way. <laughs> Is that Craig Dillon? Who gets going? Yes, car number 16, Craig Dillon. I just saw that in the corner of the TV shot there. So Dillon makes a little mistake. With, was he pushed? Or did he just jump? That's the question. Oh, cheeky, cheeky chappers into the back of David Slay there. Now, Hannah was the one after race one saying, such a nice race, clean race, no contact. And straight away, she's throwing the big guns out there into the back bumper of David Slay. And you don't want to hit David because it just makes him more angry. As we go over the crest of the hill to start another lap here in the sunshine at Knock Hill. Dalgleish with a beautiful line through there. David Slay a little bit tail happy, if anything. Possibly cost himself a bit of time, and now Hannah starting to watch out for car 24, the Remax housing car of John Duncan, run by Mini Max as they go over the crest of the chicane and start heading up the back straight. That's a good one. Craig Blake's got a bit of uh, a bit of keen hassle behind him, and that keen hassle comes in the way of Ian Munro and Michael Weddle. Not two people I would want to have behind me in a racetrack. Just want to try and gap them and get away. And then Fiona Kindness is well involved in that one. That was Taylor Shandier sliding through the corner, I believe. As we head towards the hairpin. Gordon Long at the back in his grey car. Just starting to get used to the Celtic Speed Mini Coopers. Now David Slay's put a bit of a gap between himself and Hannah Chapman. And that in minis is almost comfortable. Unless it's Joe Tanner behind you. But thankfully for everybody out here, it's not Joe Tanner. Look at this side by side though. Weddle's on the inside of Blake as they go up and over the crest of the hill. So that looks like the move is more or less done and dusted for him. And it shouldn't be too hard now for Weddle to hold that. We need to be at toughest dip to see Weddle coming into view. Big long straight here at Notka Racing Circuit. Where's Weddle? On the inside, yes, Blake fights, fights, fights and holds on. Wow, what a manoeuvre from Craig Blake. That will just set Michael Weddle a little bit more agitated inside that car because that looked like he had the move done. But we know how keen and how committed Craig Blake is over the crest of the hill as Simon Holderness in car number 52 now wants to get involved in this battle as well. Up the back straight, Weddle goes right, goes back to the left. You can't really be making a manoeuvre once you've made a manoeuvre. You know, one manoeuvre, and you certainly it's frowned upon to make a manoeuvre in that braking zone. So this direction we'll be keeping an eye on that as we head towards Epper Weddle on the inside this time. The move is done and dusted. Blake knows that, and Craig Blake is sensible enough not to try and fight and lose any more time than he had. And he's effectively pushing Michael Weddle through the hairpin there. And he's got a good run through the hairpin. So what's Weddle going to do here? He's going to try and squeeze Craig Blake towards the inside, but he's also got to keep half an eye on Fee Kindness coming up the main street as well. As we go over the crest of the hill and start another lap, Gordon Long onto the back of Mark Dawson now, as Robbie Dalgleish now sets a, a bit of a comfortable gap between him and the pursuing pack is Blake, wow, Blake over the top of Duffus, he's so keen and <laughs> look at the track limits at the bottom, he's going to end up getting a slap on the wrist there and then has massive understeer as he gets towards McIntyre's, this is the speed he's carrying, forcing him in there so quickly but Craig Blake extremely brave through the top of Duffus dip and you've got to be because there's Weddle back on the inside now and Weddle comes up the inside and tries to force the issue here as William Blake's involved in this now, oh a little bit of side to side contact with the two guys going through Clarks here for Weddle and Blake and they're going to arrive at the hairpin once again side by side as Chapman now homes up to the back of David Slay in the, ra the Ram Tubular's car of Hannah as we see in the background the pursuing melee of Blake, Weddle and uh, William Blake up the main straight but look at that, that's a nice buffer for Roby Dalgleish the man in number 91 he won the first race of the day as David Slay goes sideways over the crest of the hill He's looking good for the second race. Now they're coming up to get a back marker. Is that Don Wheatley? I can see about to go a lap down. Surely not. Unless Don Wheatley was possibly involved in that Craig Dillon moment. Oh, well, no, 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 no. Into the gravel. He keeps it lit. He comes back on Craig Blake. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Craig Blake drives straight towards the apex of Butchers. Um, I can see young Mr. Blake maybe having to take a few trips up the stairs to race control here at Knockhill and uh, explain his actions over that one. He come back on the track at a very kind of acute angle to the, the racers there. But uh, into McIntyre's turn three, too hot. Just understeered straight on. You can see the front of the car not wanting to grip. Such as uh, was Craig's enthusiasm, shall we say, to get through that corner. So back towards Apen. Now that's let Michael Weddle off the hook from Craig Blake, but he's got rid of one Blake and he picks up another Blake. And it's William Blake this time in car number 26. Although the gap looks a little bit bigger now for him, he looks not too bad from where he is. 
but still he's got a Blake behind him. David Slate has a Chapman behind him and he has a bit of hassle from Hannah Chapman. It looks like Robbie Dalgleish has broken the toe and that is Dom Wheatley. These guys are coming up to put a lap down. So Dom Wheatley way off the back of the pack. Something's happened that we don't know about in the commentary box. But normally when they start to catch a back marker, they catch them pretty quickly. And these guys really struggling to catch Dom Wheatley. But this could possibly be helping Robbie Dalgleish. Seeing a faster car in front of him, it's, uh, it's good to lead. It's easier to follow, some people say. But Dom Wheatley is uh, effectively pulling along Robbie Dalgleish towards the end of this mini race. And that will really be helping Robbie's head focus on where he is heading. Fiona Kindness and Simon Holdenness go through there with Taylor Shand and Craig Blake <laughs> recovering Craig Blake. Now, this, uh, this could be quite interesting to see how Craig Blake deals with Taylor Shan. Taylor, who we normally see racing in the JCW Mini Championship, which goes around uh, the England, basically. Hopefully we'd like to see that in Scotland one day. Our very own Joe Tanner racing that. Paul Bell has been racing in that previously as well. But look at the gap now at the front and side by side for second place. Chappers brave on the outside, but that's not going to happen. David Slate says, no, thank you. He'll go back up the inside and he takes that and makes a move stick as he goes through Duffy's dip. Over the kerbs at McIntyre's, both drivers deciding to take a big hunk of sausage kerb on the inside. As John Duncan watches this, as we see, <laughs> that can only be one man. That'll be Craig Blake over the crest of Duffy's dip there. Completely sideways. Oh, Taylor Shand straight on, bang, into the wreck to sell. That will be Taylor Shand out of the race there. Now, was that a mechanical failure because, or was that puncture or something? Because Taylor didn't seem, yeah, hands in the air. What exactly happened there? She doesn't know, she doesn't like it. Out, climbs over the wreck to sell. She will watch the remaining couple of laps. I think there's two of them to go from the side of McIntyre's. So David Slade on a bit of a pressure mission here now as Robbie Dalgleish has pulled away handsomely. They come past the scene of Taylor Shands off. Double wave yellow flags at the instant. Single wave yellow flag at the crest of the hill here. Up the back straight goes the man who's about to go a lap down, Don Wheatley. He might not even go a lap down, actually, such as his pace here and the pursuing pack and it's now a three car battle for second place Slay, Chapman and Duncan with hello Dougie Simpson just off the back and then Ash Morris as well Me and Monroe a little bit too far back but into the hairpin David Slay defends there's no defending from your race leader Robbie Dalgleish Slay holds off Chappers as they come through the hairpin Chapman's going to have to watch he's not slow the run up towards the line here or John Duncan could take this but it's a checker flag for Robbie Dalgleish it's second for David Slay third for Chapman the same result as race number one and that will be delight for Hannah Chapman two podiums to start the day and David Slay well there's a bigger gap though and that's the first thing Slay's going to look at Dalgleish pulled away from that one and it was 1.3 seconds was the gap at the end of it. Chapman in third, John Duncan, Dougie Simpson, Ash Morris, as we said. Seventh for Ian Munro, Michael Weddle, William Blake, Fee Kindness. Greg Blake did finish behind Simon Holderness in 12th place after a very energetic drive. And what happened to Dom Wheatley? That's what we need to find out. Guys on the podium, the top three and the best newcomer, Michael Weddle. Now, let's hand down to Fiona Wallace. Fiona. Give us some interviews. <laughs> well done, Robbie. Another win. Uh, you had a wee bit of a gap there, but you couldn't relax with having David Slay and Hannah right behind you. Yeah, so, I mean, another great start got away. Um, last two laps was kind of chilled out because I could see Hannah got in the back of David, so they were just fighting and defending, so I knew they would be slowing up. So I kind of knew if I just drove it around, it would be pretty much sealed the wins, which is what happened, so it was good. And those changes you made to your clutch, that definitely helped. Yeah, they're so much, so much better. I mean, before you used to be trying to find the bite point and stuff, there it just hits it straight away and just take off. So yeah, definitely a good decision that we made putting that in. Yeah, you'll need it for um, race three starting P5. Yeah, so I actually got the ball draw quite good for once. I usually pick the worst possible, but yeah, starting fifth in this one. Uh, I've never done three out of three. I said this last time when I had the first two wins, so desperate to try to get this one. All my sponsors are here this weekend, so it'll be good to show off for them. I think you can maybe get on the podium the next one. Fingers crossed. Yeah, well, uh, best of luck, Robbie, and hopefully see you again. Thank yes. you. Michael, last minute dash out to the grid there. Do you want to explain what happened? Uh, one of the bolts on the steering rack had sheared, so we noticed that in the last race just with the so it was a bit of a mad dash to get fixed. I think we got in with three minutes to spare. Fortunately, though, that meant we had no power steering, so that was quite an odd experience for me. And uh, why are you wet? Because uh, as soon as I got out of the car, they decided to pour water over me because. I don't go to the gym, but that's kind of made me feel like I need to go to the gym now after that. That will work out. 
Good, so uh, Minimax have pulled their miracles as usual. Uh, they always do. Minimax always pull it out great, so last minute when they needed to, they've done it again. Good, well, uh, best of luck for race three and hopefully you get your uh, power steering back. I really could do it. <laughs> Cheers. Thanks, Michael. Well done, David. P2, but Hannah, she was right on your bumper all the way through. She was, eh? It was kind of... Cl- Try to just keep with Robbie for the first open lap, so then the gap closed, and then I just had to start defending for it. And uh, yeah, Hannah does keep uh, the pressure on entirely there, so I had to try and do everything I could to try and make sure she remained behind me there. Yeah, she looks quite fast in a straight line. Um, I, have no, I have no idea, but it's just she's got some performance today, that's for, for sure. Obviously, qualified really well, and the performance and tracks are showing as well. So, um, where are you starting for race through you? P3, are you, are you still in P3? Yep, yeah, exactly. For a tar- reverse grid of five places, so uh, yeah, we'll see where it goes from there. You're quite good at starting, so we might, might get a few places. It's good, it's a, yes, exactly. It's uh, d- definitely one of my positives that I've, uh, I've kept going over the years, so let's uh, let's see if I can get a good start off there and see what happens in the next race. Good, well, uh, best of luck. Yep, thanks very much, Rona. Cheers. So, well done, Hannah. What's, the, what's happened to Lola? I had a little nudge. Well, I, I did the nudging. Um, yeah, I was battling hard with David Slay, and he was in front of me at the hairpin, and he just stopped a lot more than I'd t- anticipated. Because I'm, I'm normally really, really late on the brakes at the hairpin, and I just, I just went into the back of him. And I, I did it. wasn't malicious. Like so. a bit of love tap never goes wrong in minis. <laughs> yeah. Well, it happens often enough. I don't like to give it out, but. It wasn't on purpose. <laughs> no, it looks like you're having a really good day anyway. And um, third race, you're starting P4? I think I'm three again. Three. Yeah, I think I'm three. In that last race, it's never a nice position to be in a sandwich between the two championship contenders. <laughs> I was very conscious John was behind me and David was in front. And I wasn't wanting to hold John up, but I was obviously having such a good race for myself. But again, starting in third for race three, I just want to try and do the same again. Just get back on the podium because... That's where I want to be for my sponsors. Just can't thank them enough. Ram Tubulars, RGR Logistics, I've got quite a long list. Sightmast Enterprises, Advil Steel, Nexus 24. Just have to mention them all because they're just, I wouldn't be here without them. So thank you. Well, let's see what you can do in race three. Thank you. As you can see, the cars are all lined up, ready to go for race three of the Celtic Speed Mini Cooper Cup, and it's a reverse grid draw. Let's see what Douglas Simpson can do from pole position. Duncan, over to you for the commentary. Thank you very much, Fiona Wallace. Looking great as ever there, and that's uh, that's a cracking microphone, Fiona. We need to see if we can get you something a little bit smaller as the cars roll through Clark Corner on their warm-up lap. So the grid has been dictated from the ball draw the end of race number two and uh, well Hannah Chapman was sporting a little bit of damage to Lola she's very conscious of that and she won't want to be doing any more of that because at the front end just behind that little hole there in your car is your radiator too much front end tapping or love taps as she likes to put it on front floor we're talking about it you certainly don't want to be love tapping David Slay very often that's for sure too much of that and you may end up puncturing the radiator and that could be an absolute disaster for your race. So the final mini race of the day, it's always an absolute cracker. Craig Blake, that man going through, number 95, is bound to be all action as we've seen him today already, giving us some fabulous, uh, not on board him, but from Michael Weddle's car watching Craig Blake and uh, the Aussie cameras. He's been uh, trying extremely hard, shall we say, and we still haven't got to the bottom of why Don Wheatley is so far back this weekend. However, here we go. We wait for the lights to come on the bridge. The five second board goes out for the last mini race of the day. It's clouded over a little bit. The sun has popped away. Track temperature will be a lot cooler now. Full complement of lights and away we go down towards the first corner. It's a decent start by everybody. Thankfully again, nobody stalling it on the line as we watch every single car going down underneath the Beatson's Bone Supply Bridge. And there's a bit of jostling for position. It's John Duncan with Hannah Chapman trying to go up the inside, but John Duncan leads from Davis Lee. Oh, Simpson with a massive save there. Save of the day for Dougie Simpson there. He got well sideways. That was almost on the lock stops. Robbie Dalgleish trying to avoid contact as well, but round goes 26. Craig Blake's in it. Ross Wilkinson, so William and Craig Blake both getting caught out with that. Then Ross Wilkinson gets back on the track as well. 
and somebody else goes off at the crest of the chicane as well. That's Ashley Morris rejoins, and I think that was possibly Ian Munro. So it all kicks off on lap number one at turn number three, and they've behaved so well today as there's a big, big gap in the mid pack now. In fact, that's the leaders away first and second, John Duncan and David Slate away at the front. Now, is there something happening at Exit Clarksy? Because they've been taking a very strange line through where there's a little bit of car possibly come off of somebody, but we pick up the leaders coming towards the hairpin anyway. And look at that, Robbie Dalglish has <laughs> now got himself already up into fourth place. Now we're seeing yellow flags there. Do we have a safety car? I thought that. You see the yellow flags go in, realise the cars haven't been at the hairpin yet. So, obviously William Blake's car in the gravel trap at the hairpin will need to be recovered. Let's hope everybody sees the flags and doesn't do anything silly here. Like ploughing into the back of the car in front. So, the minis get three corners and then three cars end in the gravel trap. One looks like he hasn't got out, that's William Blake. Unfortunately, somebody tagged William around there. He's just getting dragged off the track now at the chicane. He's been recovered to that point. And Craig Blake and Ross Wilkinson, the other guys, caught up in that. They were on the outside of that, so I don't believe they were the guys who had done the hitting as Simpson heads for the pit lane. Douglas Simpson heads for the pit lane as the safety car dives down the travel. Hannah Chapman's got a bit of bumper trailing and they've kind of missed the restart in the mid-back. Ashley Morris has left a big gap from her and Robbie Dalglish and also behind Ashley there's a pretty big gap as well back to Fee Kine. So those girls have just uh, completely missed the restart here. And that's your chance to get right up to the back of the car in front as they go over the crest and we're now racing again at Knock Hill here. And it's John Duncan who leads in towards first corner, but Dalgleish dive bombs Chappers and makes a good manoeuvre there. So Robbie Dalgleish was knowing, well, he had his wits about him at that restart and he got past at the first corner of asking. So great move from Robbie Dalgleish. That puts him onto a podium position. Has he got anything, has he got enough in the tank of that many to catch up and pass Slay and John Duncan? Well, that will be... Uh, That'll be pretty, that'll be a big ask to tell you the truth. Let's see how they get on here as they go up towards Clark Corner now. The whole of the field have got through. Don Wheatley has, uh, looks like he's got a bit of pace in this race. Thankfully, Johnny Dreeland at the back there. As we see people starting to make way, <laughs> make way for Craig Blake. That, that should be a sticker. Hashtag make way for Blake as he comes through. Out of the hairpin, John Duncan leads from David Slate. Robbie Dalgleish is catching. Robbie Dalgleish has put together an absolutely sensational lap here. And as he go over the crest of the hill just now, and this could be the fastest lap of the race for Robbie Dalgleish. So far, a 102.8 for Robbie Dalgleish. So that is the quickest lap of the race, and he's put together that on his own. And three are just trying to chase down these two guys at the front as David Slate has a bit of a correction mid-hill there. Going down Duffy's dip as we pick up Michael Weddle somewhere there. There he is there, falling through. Good stuff. And fee kindness with Monroe Ian. Just off the back of our Simon Holderness and Don Wheatley there go through the shot as well. Don Wheatley with a bit of gravel on the side of his wheels and tires. And already defending in towards Clarks goes John Duncan. A little bit early in the race for that. If you start defending, you're just going to back the guys up behind you. But he may feel he just doesn't have the pace in that Mini Max car at this point in the race. However, he also knows that he's got to finish the race because he can't afford a DNF the way the championship's going. Look at this, three wide into the hairpin. This is NASCAR stuff as Robbie Dalgleish tries to come round outside of David Slee. Will he have anything on the exit? David Slee cuts to the inside. That's momentarily cut his momentum as Dalgleish goes left. Then he goes back to the right. He's trying to follow John Duncan up the main street and a really good manoeuvre from Robbie Dalgleish. Here as Hannah Chapman heads for the pit lane with that trailing bumper. As we watch into Duffy's, yes, Dalgleish gets past David Slay. Really, really clever move from Robbie Dalgleish. He almost sold David Slay, the dummy, coming up the main straight. And Robbie Dalgleish hits the front. Oh, doesn't he? Hits the front of David Slay. He doesn't hit the front of the race. He gets into second place. Mm, how long will it be before he does hit the front there? My precursor up as something happens in the background. The camera zooms back. Yeah, Craig Dillon turned round. Wow, absolutely no need whatsoever. He's spun out of McIntyre's head on into the tyre. Well, that was quite a big hit as well. So Craig Dillon will be taking no further play part in this race, one would imagine. As the rest of the cars all make their way through and up towards the hairpin. A bit of damage. Is that damage on David Slate's car, actually, there? What's happened? Something's happened out of our shot there. And... We'll need to try and pick up on that one if we can. Is Monroe? Wow, what a dive bombing manoeuvre from Ian Monroe. He gets through, cracking stuff from him there. As we go up the main straight now towards 
clicking off another lap. Craig Dillon out of the car. Depression. Stretching for depression for that poor man there. Go and give him a hug if you're in the stands. Where's John Duncan? We've lost John Duncan. We've got damage on David Slay's car. We've missed this on camera. So something has happened to the championship leader. And this is an absolute disaster for John Duncan. As we can't see where or what has happened. But we have got a yellow flag. That will be for Craig Dillon, one would imagine. Craig Dillon's car, which is at the exit of that corner. Don Wheatley's got to watch. He doesn't go past there. But something has happened to John Duncan. He has managed to come back round on our timing screens, albeit he's down in 16th position right now. So he's gone from the lead of the race down to 16th. And unfortunately, we haven't caught that on camera as the rest of the guys make their way round towards the hairpin. Through comes Blake. And there's John Duncan just behind Craig Blake. So John Duncan on a comeback drive behind Craig Blake. And that puts him up into 15th place just now as the rest of the guys at the hairpin Fiona Kindness holding off Simon Holden is pretty well here to tell the truth for Fee Kindness and obviously Ross McCall in there as well car number 44 as they come up to cross the start finish line so there has been a bit of controversy in this one that we haven't seen on camera no doubt race control will have seen that and they'll be deciding what goes down with that side by side John Duncan and Craig Blake over the crest of the hill David Slay with the damage on the front right of front left of his car you can see that there and the bumper trailing the ground. Now, will the race direction be interested in that? Is that causing, well, could that be dangerous? Would that what they would deem it as? Unsafe? If that would be the case, the black flag with the orange dot in it would come out, which means David would have to report into the pit lane. The scrutineers would be there waiting to see him. But they will see if it is securely fixed on. Scrutineers will be down on the pit wall having a good look at that car to make sure they think it is safe. And thus let David continue on in the race as the cars head towards the hairpin now. Not long to go in this one. Well, Robbie Dalgleish looks like, just now, as everybody else falls apart around him, he's keeping his head, he's doing exactly what he needs to do, and it looks like he could be on for three out of three as Taylor Shan defends from Dom Wheatley as they go through the hairpin just now. Up the main straight to click off another lap. Bit of bit of dust getting kicked up in the background there as we see Weddle and Munro quickly flash through in McComb, Kindness, Holderness and the rest of the guys all trying to follow suit as they go over the crest of Duffy's dip here through turn three McIntyre's that's where we lost Taylor Shand in race number two as well, dear Andy Bell has a, a little bit of a, a rush of blood to the head there runs a little bit wide but manages to get back on the track as they go through Butchers but here's your man in the lead of the race and he's, well, he's, dis he's, he's almost destroyed the field this weekend, hasn't he? He's won two out of two. Can he make it three out of three? And it's looking pretty good for Robbie Dalgleish as he comes in towards the hairpin. The rest of the pursuing pack all battle it out here at Nokia Racing Circuit. There's been some energetic driving. There's been some fabulous defending and overtaking in this. Got to say that. As we still see Shand defend from Weddle and holding, and in fact, that's Dom Wheatley, sorry, and holding him back as they make their way up the main street. Bit of bumper or a bit of trim slaps and flies off the side of Ian Munro's car. As he now crosses the line and has Wheatley got anything for Shand. Shand returning to the championship for this possible, just this little one-off race. As the race leader comes through, the debris flag or diminished adhesion flag shown in the background there, the yellow flag with the red stripes. This means the track surface is different from the last time you were in there, probably from Andy Bell going off and bringing on a lot of gravel at the exit of that corner. The top three now kind of strung out. Ashley Morris though, just off the back of this group, defending from Weddle, is that somebody else goes off now? Is that John Duncan trying just a little bit too hard there? And losing a little bit of time going through McIntyre's now, that will just be pure emotion in that car from John Duncan, one would imagine. He won't be terribly happy with that, but up the inside of Ashley Morris goes Michael Weddle. Weddle makes a move stick, and Morris could be about to lose two positions here to Ian Munro as well. Ashley just sees herself pushed off the podium and then in towards the gravel on the exit of that corner. Great shame for Ashley, but Weddle with a great manoeuvre, and Ian Munro, opportunistic as ever, gets his car in the right place up the main straight now, and that manoeuvre is basically done and dusted. By the time they get to Duff's dip, he should be ahead of young Ashley Morris, who has really put together a fabulous race meeting today. Yeah, there we go. Munro does slide past at the apex of Duffy's dip in towards turn three McIntyre's. Has Munro got anything left for Weddle? We're running out of laps pretty quickly here. 
as Ross McCollum goes through as well. Fee kindness takes a bit of curb, and still Don Wheatley has Taylor Shand issues, and he just cannot get past Taylor Shand. As your new third place podium man, Michael Weddle, heads up the back straight. There's your race leader. There's David Slane, second place, and there's Michael Weddle in third. Ian Monroe, though, but as Ashley Morris takes a very extravagant line through Clark Corner there. <laughs> Does she come back on? Eventually, yes, at almost the hairpin. Ian Monroe, well, he'll be thinking that he deserves a podium. He's always the, the nearly man as he's putting together a charge here. And look at that, Weddle trying to defend a bit early as they come up towards the line. Dalgleish wins second for Slate. It's going to be on the line for this one. Who will it be? Third place goes just two as the timing scream updates. Ian Monroe takes it from Michael Weddle. Ian Monroe takes it by one tenth of a second. Brilliant driving from Monroe to get through the hairpin there. A little bit too defensive for Weddle. But it's all about car number 91. It's all about Robbie Dalgleish who makes it three out of three here today. He celebrates with the window down and waves to the spectators and the marshals as he comes through. McIntyre's here, David Slay sporting a right good bit of front end damage with that one. And look at that, and even a board for Ashley Morris here. So let's hand down to Hannah Chapman for some post-race interviews from Mr. 3 out of 3, Robbie Dalgleish. 3 out of 3, Robbie, what a drive. Yeah, I mean, race just fitted perfectly for me. I mean, I missed all the carnage at the start by the skin of my teeth and then Safety car came out, so the gap was close right down, and then after that, I just picked uh, John off, Anna, and then uh, David as well, so happy days. <laughs> you managed to maintain that gap as well to David? Yeah, I mean, David and John came together, I'm not sure what happened, but um, once they came together, that was just a nice big gap for me, and then I could see David had damage on the front, so I don't know if he was maybe affecting his performance, so the gap just got bigger and bigger, and then could chill out for the last couple of laps, just watching every gauge possible, making sure nothing goes wrong. <laughs> Are you going to celebrate tonight? Uh, I'm working at half six tomorrow morning. I'm absolutely knackered, so no, I'll probably be in my bed in about an hour's time. That'll be some celebration for you then. <laughs> Congratulations again, and we'll see you in September. Thanks very much. Well done, Ian. What a fight that was for P3. Yeah, it was a good battle all the way through. A bit of chaos at the start, and like, we went into the chicane of the first lap, and everyone just split in every every direction. Came out of that, no too bad, and then it was just working my way through. Uh, me and Michael had a good battle all the way through. Uh, and then I was catching him and I had the pace of him and I, th I thought I would get him and then I made a run to get him out on the last corner and uh, the checker flag came out and I was like, oh, I've got him then. <laughs> so it was, uh, yeah, was pretty, pretty happy with that. And no car troubles this time, last time you had a few issues. We've had them all weekend, we had brake problems all weekend, so there's been little niggles, uh, just ABS going and uh, flat tyres are vibrating like hell, so it's made it a bit hard to sort of get up, but that time it was going all right. So yeah, you've it, done well then to get P3. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It made the weekend, the end of the weekend, good. So yeah, well, good. more of the same next time in uh, September. Yeah, cheers. Eh? Well done, Michael. P4 there, nearly P3 though. Yeah, it just got on the line there. I think it started eight, so it was quite a chaos first few laps. So I was just trying to stay out of it for a change. Uh, it worked, so we'll take it. You've got a few love taps on your car. I, I think we've got one on that side, one that I've lost count. <laughs> You just can't seem to keep a, a clean car, can you? No, I mean, it's kind of boring, so I kind of like to mix it up a little bit. So you can kind of see Timmy Mackay this time, I've kind of stayed up there, so one of my main sponsors. Their stickers this time have actually survived. I think that's what um, everyone loves about the minis. It's such close racing, and there's a bit of damage. Yeah, I mean, by the end of that third or fourth lap, I think there was just, it was like a graveyard. There was someone down at the Mac tires, someone off the clutch, there's just many bits everywhere, so I'm going to go around collecting everyone's bit just to put back on mine. Did you see what happened between David Slay and John Duncan? No, I just came around the corner and John was st off stage exit right and I'm guessing David had a bit of damage because he was going to slow him down halfway through the race. I'm not sure what actually happened. Oh well, um, better luck next time for those two. But congratulations again to you and we'll see you in September. And that's the race and drawn to a close today for the Celtic Speed Mini Cooper Cup here at Knockhill Racing Circuit. We'll see you again soon for more action-packed racing.